Last month, I talked about how to set up and use assembly items in Sage 50's inventory. This month, we're going to expand on that and talk a little bit about how to add um, labor costs or overhead costs to the bill of materials for an assembly item. So we're going to start by going to maintain inventory items. And um, I've already got an assembly item that we'll work with. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set up an item ID for labor. So we'll put labor there for our ID and then description use something like labor allocated to inventory. You can use whatever you want there. Um, then the most important thing is this item class or one of the most important things is we want to set our item class to labor. Do not set that up as a stock item. Um, then down here, our uh, last unit cost, we're going to want to put in the cost of one hour of labor here. So whether you do just your wages or whether you also uh, factor in, um, you know, uh, employer taxes and uh, benefits like 401k or insurance, things like that, um, you know, whatever you decide on as your, as your cost for one hour of labor, that's what you're going to put in here. I'm going to put 40 in there for our example. Then the sales account and the cost of sales account, you can probably just leave at their default settings because more than likely you'll never be selling this labor item. You'll just be using it um, as part of the bill of materials for an assembly. But the GL salary and wages account is important. Um, <clears throat> if we're going to add um, you know, $40 per hour to each of our, our items that we build, that money has to come from somewhere and so it's going to come from whatever account we put in this field right here so it's defaulting to uh, the wages expense but we don't actually want to use that because we still want to be able to look at an income statement and see what our total wages are so i'm going to set up a new account and since our other account was 775 we're going to make this 775 99-00 and yeah you know, we can call it uh, well we can give it the same description as our our item labor allocated to inventory and this is going to be an expense account so this account will normally have a negative balance in it because it's going to show you how much of your labor costs have been allocated to your inventory. So we'll save that, close that, come back here, and now we'll put that account in there. Okay, now we're going to save that. And I'm going to set up another item for overhead. One, one more word on, on labor. If you have different labor rates that would apply in different departments um, or for different items, then you'll probably have to set up more than one labor item so that you can set the last, last unit cost to whatever you want it to be for that particular group of items. Um, all right, so let's do a new item. And I'm just going to use OH for the ID. We'll call that um, overhead assigned to inventory and for the item class on this I'm going to call this a non-stock item you could also use service or labor and it would work the same way but I'm going to call it non-stock now here for the last unit cost I'm going to use a dollar there um, since we don't have you know hours on overhead like we do for for labor costs we're going to set that to a dollar and again, the sales account and the cost of sales account, you can just leave those at the defaults. You're never going to be selling overhead to a customer, so they won't, won't get used. And we're going to want um, another account for our, for our overhead. Um, if you've got a grouping of overhead accounts, you can place it at the end of those. Um, I'm just going to put it at the end of my expense section. Um, so I'm going to create a new account. And we'll just make it 7999900 and call it overhead signed to inventory. 
you can use whatever descriptions you want in there. And again, this is going to be an expense account. Save that. Return to maintain inventory items. And put that account in there. And then, of course, you want to save that too. Okay, so that's all there is to setting up the labor item and the overhead item. And I guess I could include an N in my description there. So now we're going to go to our assembly that we want to add labor and overhead to. So we're going to go to the Bill Materials tab. And since I'm using an existing item, um, I can't just add to it. Um, and I'm on Quantum, so I have this Revisions button. If you're not on Quantum, um, if you're on Sage 50 Premium, then you would actually have to create a whole new item in order to um, in order to modify, or because you can't modify the bill of materials in, in premium, you'd have to create a whole new item. But I'm going to hit the revision button, and I'm going to create a new revision, and we'll give it an effective date. We'll put that to the 21st, and now I can add whatever I want to the bill of materials. So I'm going to add labor, and I'm going to say that we have about half an hour of labor um, that goes into each of these assemblies. And then overhead, because I used a different method on the overhead and set the, the unit cost to a dollar, then I'm just going to put in a quantity here that is the same as the dollar amount of overhead that I want to assign to each item. So if I want $2.50 of overhead on each one, I'll just put it in like that. And we'll save that, and then we'll close this, and we'll resave our assembly. Now, when we go to build that assembly, we choose our assembly item. We'll make sure we choose a date that's on or after our effective date for the revision. And I'm just going to build one of those. And let's save that. And now I'm going to bring up an income statement. And here I've got one with account numbers, so it'll be easy to find them. Now when we scroll down, here we see 77599 labor allocated inventory. Remember we set our unit cost as $40 an hour, but we only put half an hour on that item. So we're seeing $20 on there, and here we're seeing $2.50 of overhead assigned to inventory. If you want to, you could double click on those and drill down uh, to the general ledger, and then back to the assembly transaction. And so back here at the income statement, we can still see what our total wages were for the period, as well as the amount of labor cost that we've allocated to inventory and the total overhead that we've allocated to our inventory costs. Eventually, those costs will end up in your cost of sales. Um, you know, as, since they're built into the, the unit cost of your inventory items, now once you sell them, then they'll, they'll uh, reduce your net income uh, through the cost of sales. So that's all there is to adding labor and overhead to your assembly items.